it's a variety of overlapping and kind of cascading risks that affect particular areas and have now turned into a global crisis. So first off, you have COVID itself, which caused problems with supply chains. It's also caused problems with in countries which rely on imported labour. And those range from Southeast Asia to countries like the United Kingdom. If you can't get the labour, you can't harvest the crops. You have a set of regional problems probably related to climate change. Um, you, have, you had a famine in East Africa for the last few years. The United States had a very poor year last year, and that's on top of declining output over the last two decades. Also regionally, you have kind of man-made crises, so that ranges from civil wars in countries like Yemen to policy decisions relating to the global debt crisis. So it, as a means of trying to conserve foreign exchange reserves, Sri Lanka, for instance, and banned fertiliser imports. So that meant that its output of agriculture was low. And combined, these factors meant that in February this year, global food prices were 20% higher year on year than they were the year before. And that's when Russia invaded Ukraine, and Russia and Ukraine being two of the largest exporters of foodstuffs, notably wheat, also palm oil, and also natural gas. And that is what's caused the global food crisis. What it means for us is that it's food price inflation and it's the rising costs of bread and other foodstuffs in the supermarket. What it means elsewhere in the world is, according to the World Food Programme, more than 800 million people stand at risk of malnutrition and 50 million of those on the edge of famine. So in, in developed countries, if you like, food availability is there. It's the cost that's risen. And in the poorest countries, um, even prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, I work on Afghanistan and there it's actual food shortages because the food isn't actually, it's actually there in the first place.